Hello there and welcome to this week's Media News with me, Gareth O'Connor. I'm going to start things off with many effect on our multi-screen world. Um, I'm going to rattle through these, but I will leave you with the URL so you can digest these more in your own time. But here's a quick education. Um, I stumbled across this at the weekend. This is work done by Google. The majority of media consumption is screen but 90% of all media now is screen-based which is pretty phenomenal. And 38% of our daily media interactions are now on a smartphone, which is amazing. But it goes to show if you have a piece of content, or an ad even, increase your chances of being seen. Don't just put it all on television, spread it out across. Number of screens, it can be the same piece of content, the same ad, but it gives you an increased opportunity to reach more people. Incremental reach, if you will. 90% or people use screen, screens, screens, screens sequentially, which means one after the other, but they're using multiple devices to complete a task, um, which is, um, I guess, kind of interesting. But of course, you've got to then think about how people are using each screen to complete that part of the task. Television no longer com com commands people's full attention. 77% um, of people watching television are also utilizing another device. Quite something, right? But again, it's call to action on a TVC, drive people online. If they're already on a device that's connected to the internet, much easier for them to do that. Make things easier for people. Online shopping, of course, is also a multi-screen activity nowadays. 67% um, of people have used multiple screens sequentially to shop online. They may look for something on their smartphone, but then they may well complete the purchase on a laptop. Smartphones, of course, are spontaneous. 81% of... Uh, Shopping done on a mobile is spontaneous as opposed to online on a desktop or a laptop. It's nearly always planned. Um, but some quick stats for you. Everyone loves a good stats. 24% of daily media interactions occur on a laptop. 40% um, of, of those activities are motivated by finding information, keeping up to date. It's more task-based almost when you get to PC and laptop. 69% of PC laptop activity occurs at home. No surprises there. 38%, like I said, of media interactions occur on a smartphone now. 54% of smartphone use is motivated by communication. Again, makes sense because that is what we've always used the device for, the phone, to communicate. 33% entertainment. 60% of smartphone use occurs at home, 40% out and about. 9% of media interactions occur on tablet. But then the role of tablet is different from, say, a smartphone. Smartphone, more communication-based. Laptop, PC, more information-based. Tablets, more entertainment-based. So again, when you're thinking about um, how you are talking to people on these different platforms, don't put the same piece of creative in each place because the way people consume and use information on those is very different. So if, for instance, you're trying to advertise to people on a tablet, make it more entertaining. 79% of tablet use occurs at home. No real surprises there. And again, it's not great news for mobile providers because, of course, when they're at home, it's through Wi-Fi, so they're not paying for that data. 34% of us use the device that's closest to us when looking for information, which is why, I guess, uh, mobile, a lot of it's spur-of-the-moment stuff. See some interest you, get your mobile out, find information on that. 87%, like I said, of mobile searches are spontaneous, um, whereas 48% of searches done on PC or laptop are planned. Man, that's a lot of stats. Good stats, though. Modes of multi-screening. Sequential, using one after the other, and of course, simultaneous. Unrelated task, you could be watching something on television, playing a game on your iPad or phone. And complementary, you could see an ad on TV, and then you use your mobile telephone to purchase it. Um, activity or find out more information about plane tickets, travel. 90% of mobile screens sequentially to accomplish tests over a period of time. So this is pretty much daily. 90% of us are using screens sequentially. It's pretty big. 98% of people move between devices that same day. Again, we're a connected world now, but people are moving between multiple screens. Of course, browsing internet, social network, and shopping online, they're kind of the top activities to use sequentially. Um, smartphones are the most common place now for starting online activities, which is quite something, quite surprising. But when you think, particularly when you think of places like America and Australia, where smartphone penetration is as high as 65-75%, um, it's no real surprise. Oh, sorry, going back there. PCs and laptops are always a starting point for more complex activities. Again, no surprise. And tablets are the most common point when starting to plan a shopping trip or holiday. 
again, though, when you look at these sort of stats, the way you speak to people on these different platforms should differ. It's not one size fits all. Think about how people are using these devices. Oh, going through that again. So let me. Eat. Um, consumers rely on search more to move between devices. We use an average of three screens each day. Smartphones are the most frequent companion devices for simultaneous usage. Emailing, browsing, internet, social networking are the top three activities people perform while simultaneously using more than one screen. 78% of simultaneous usage is multitasking, while 22% is complementary. 77, like I said before, of TV viewers are using another device at the same time. TV is still, though, a major catalyst for search. Shopping. 59% of smartphone shopping is done at home, 41% out of home. 81% of mobile shopping is done spur of the moment. 42% on a PC or laptop is planned. 30% of shopping-related content accessed by a smartphone is driven by search. Always important to have mobile search running. If you've got search running on Google, make sure it's on mobile too. 67% of us start shopping on one device and continue on another. I've just told you 34 things about multi-screening in the space of a few minutes. So there's probably quite a lot there, and I would imagine you probably switched off or stopped watching this video. After about seven or eight, I hope you didn't, because of course there's a lot of good stuff there. Here is a URL. Um, of course, you can copy this uh, down. Uh, pause the video, if you will. Um, but it's some really good tasks, and it's all from Google data, so it's pretty accurate. Mobile sites. Just how important are they for the business? I've been talking now for a while about the importance of having a mobile site. Um, global traffic now, this was as of May this year, was 10% of all traffic was coming through in a mobile. That's quite high when you think you could be missing 10% of your audience because you don't have a mobile-friendly site, um, you're not taking part in mobile search. Um, that's pretty high. If you were to lose 10% of your customers, most businesses would fold. Worth thinking about. Three things to consider. Mobile sites lead to mobile purchases. So get yourself a mobile site or a mobile-friendly site. More and more people now are buying things with smartphones, even here in New Zealand. If your site isn't optimized for mobile, sh mobile, shoppers will go elsewhere. Yes, they will. It's always about making things as easy as possible for consumers, but giving yourself, your business, most opportunity. So that means giving yourself the opportunity to be good, look, have a site that looks good in tablets, have a site that looks good in mobile, have a site that looks good in the first place. Increase your chances to sell your product. A bad mobile experience can damage a company's brand. It's like any experience. Experience is so important. But any experience can be bad for your brand. It's the same as having a crappy ad. That's the voice of your brand. That's what people look at you and how people think about you. Make sure every, that's every experience is great. That's the importance of experience. So many people get that very wrong. Last week I spoke about the first pinnable banner that was done by Gucci. Well, it's a turn of pinnable magazines. These are iPad only magazines, so don't get too excited. But again, it's the sort of thing that people want to share things. Make it easy for people to share your content, share your message, share the work you're doing. But again, it's a nice idea. Highlight what you like, pin it. Makes sense, right? But I guess it's the next evolution in magazines. But it's again, again a way of being free and open with the stuff you produce and create. Let people share it. YouTube, are adding more channels. I guess YouTube, of course, in the last couple of years, has been making a play to get into television. A while ago, of course, I spoke about the 100 sites. 100, sorry, channels. Um, they launched. Now they're, they're adding some European channels, bringing it to 160 channels now. And according to the company, the top 25 original channels are averaging over a million views weekly. Which, from a global point of view, that is big traffic. Uh, 800 million viewers are watching 4 billion hours of content every month on YouTube now, which is unbelievable considering. Um, la earlier this year it was 3 billion. So the appetite for good content now or content which is just relevant to target audience, is massive. Furthermore, the number of subscribers has doubled year on year. And YouTube are now saying that some of their partners are reaching over 100,000 subscriber marks five times faster than two years ago. The hunger for content is massive. Uh, the iPad Mini is on its way. I spoke about this a while ago, but it is coming. And the 23rd of October is the date that has now been thrown around. Um, 
that'll be big news, certainly when you think more and more people are going to have tablets. If you think, you know, tablets is probably going to be around globally around 30% mark, I reckon, by the end of this year, particularly when you think of, like, Google, um, are bringing in mini, even Samsung are talking about bringing a mini tab for themselves. Um, Facebook has now launched the Want button. I spoke about this again a while ago, but they are launching now the Want button. Um, it allows users basically to click on any images or products and add them to a wish list. Um, they've also developed a collect option that enables members to collect uh, pictures and put them into product photos. This is very much like Pinterest and fancy, I guess, but it's very much like Pinterest, but it allows people to catalog things that interest to them. Um, this service, of course, will be known as Collections, um, but of course it builds on like and allows consumers to connect more with fans and share more with uh, their friends as to what they want. Um, and of course, it's a great way for then, of course, Facebook to monetize those because they can then link that through to purchase. Makes sense, right? Um, according to Rich Relevance, the e-commerce services firm, social networks accounted for just 1.3% of total internet sales in the U.S., over this year so far. Of that, 86% was from Facebook. But it's only 1.3%, but you can see with this sort of thing like the one button, when you think of the amount of people who are on here, there is an awful lot of opportunity to sell an awful lot of product. Perna Ricard put out a challenge um, to bars here in New Zealand, and they wanted to come up with ways for bars to engage consumers with absolute vodka. Now, these young whippersnappers from Design Media, Media Design School here in Auckland, they saw this um, challenge and they put something forward and they won. It's a very nice idea. Come at the hour every Wednesday. They've, yes, they've made um, they've made an hourglass out of absolute vo bottles and it does take an hour for the sand to go through. Happy hour. Ba -ba! Put it on the bar. Nice way to engage with people. Something a little bit different and I must. this must have cost a fortune I can only imagine. The Tundra, Toyota Tundra, which is one of their utility vehicles, or ute. Um, they partnered with, I guess, NASA or um, the Science Museum in LA. But basically, of course, you all will have seen it on the news that Endeavour has been towed through the streets of LA to get from the airport to the Science Museum. Um, the Tundra, they've made some content around this, but it's a wonderful, wonderful way of demonstrating the power of a ute. Um, and also, they've done it in a very American way. Um, you know, they talk about the pride of America, the fact that the, the endeavor put America in the pinnacle of the space race and um, took the world to outer space. Um, but of course, Toyota being a Japanese com company, it's a wonderful way for them to connect with Americans. Um, but I'll show you the first piece of, this is the first piece of content that was created. something that the people of the United States have been watching for years, a national icon, but it's really heavy and it's also quite big. We've got one shot at this. We put it together, it's going to be real, it's going to be live, it's going to be in front of a lot of people. We want to make sure it's going to work. This is a test. So we've loaded up two heavy haul trailers with giant concrete blocks. 20,000 pounds, 40,000 pounds, 60,000 pounds, 80,000 pounds, and another 10,000 pounds for 90,000 pounds on each trailer. Trailers that weigh 55,000 pounds each. The trailers are supported by a dolly that weighs 15,000 pounds for a total weight of 307,000 pounds. We're demonstrating the actual capacity of a real tundra. It hasn't been modified, it doesn't have special gears in it, it doesn't have a special transmission. This is the same Toyota Tundra that you would buy off of a lot. Okay, you guys ready? Three, two, one. Boom. On October 13th, Live in front of the entire world, the Toyota Tundra will tow the Endeavor on the way to its new home at the California Science Center. 
Great thing to partner. Obviously, good piece of content, but of course, that's a way of them now showing the globe, showing the world the power of a Toyota Ute. Um, I can only imagine, it must have cost a fortune for them to do that. Um, but it is a great way for them to um, um, demonstrate. Um, and then of course, you know, this of, of course all happened. Um, and just to prove they did do it, here's a little snap it. Snap it? Snip it. And I believe the, in the space the shuttle is still working its way through LA. It's taking a little longer than expected. But hey, good show of power, right? Um, DDB New York have devised a new way to make high impact campaign for water is life. I kind of like this. It all started with um, a Twitter hashtag, First World Problems. And the tweets and non problems of the well fed in the world. And they've made this ad. I hit with my phone charger. Won't reach my bed. I hate when my little seats aren't heated. When I go to the bathroom and I forget my phone. Let me tell you you know machine out of here. You come and say something. I hate it when my house is so big. I need two wireless waters. When my makeup makes my hot water taste too cold. When I have to write my maid a check, but I forget her last night. I hate it when I tell them no pickles and they still give me pickles. I like that very much. This is the last thing for me this week. And I forget. Commitment. I like this. This is a very good idea. And it certainly demonstrates explosiveness. A great, way, a great way to create experience for someone. Um, and that's it for me this week. I will see you next week.